The truth is, you cannot measure egg quality. Say what? Yeah, you heard me right. But what about AMH and FSH and that my doctor for a fact said I have bad quality eggs? I repeat, you cannot measure egg quality. So what these tests do mean, I'm going to unpack in this video for you. If this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, hello lovely, I am Inge Fleur Sprey and I'm a natural fertility specialist helping couples worldwide to fall pregnant naturally through the videos on this channel and my program, The Fertility Reclaim. I think the idea of bad eggs is one of the number one worries for many of my patients. And whether that is because of their age and that media tells us that after a certain age, our egg quality starts to rapidly decline or because their AMH or FSH levels aren't ideal or because their doctor flat out said to them, you have bad eggs. Yeah, it does happen. Egg quality is on the minds of many of my patients, especially when they're over 35 and I'm sure it's on your mind as well. I've received lots of questions like April's question on how to determine egg quality. But before we jump into that, may I remind you of this one truth that I tell my patients too? You need one egg. You need one golden egg and then one golden sperm cell and they need to like each other and merge. That's it. Remember that. Okay. So April asks, do you know of any way to test my egg quality for over 45? Of course, statistics aren't great and we're looking at an egg donor at this point. And Hina asks, how can we know our egg or sperm quality and how can we enhance the quality? Well, how to improve egg and sperm quality naturally, I've covered in two previous videos and I'll make sure to link those in. They are long watches and they give you all of the tools that you can start applying to improve egg quality in three cycles and sperm quality in 90 days. But as far as measuring egg quality, like I said in the intro, we can't measure egg quality. The only way for us to know if an egg is of good quality, i.e. if it has the normal amount of chromosomes, 23, is if we expose that egg to sperm cells and that egg cell merges with another sperm cell and then they test the embryo to see if they have 46 chromosomes. So 23 from the sperm cell and 23 from the egg cell. If it's less than that or it's more than that, it is assumed that the egg cell was of poor quality. But I mean, it could have been the sperm cell too. Even if you have done sperm testing before, that one sperm cell could have been of poor quality. So again, how much does it say? Well, maybe if you have several embryos and lots of those embryos have less than the 46 chromosomes or more than that. So what do we mean then when we are talking about egg quality? How can we say that a woman has low egg quality or lower egg quality or even bad eggs? Usually what we actually mean is that the percentage of expected normal eggs will be lower and that the amount of eggs that this woman is expected to have will be lower. So the less eggs you have and the higher the percentage of abnormal eggs that are expected, the less amount of normal eggs you are expected to have. And that is what is meant with lower egg quality or low egg quality or bad eggs. It doesn't mean that your overall egg quality is poor. It just means that the amount of normal eggs you're expected to have is lower than when you were younger. So let's have a look at what information is used to determine your egg quality, or should I say your expected amount of normal DNA eggs. So the first factor is age. And I already kind of mentioned that, right? As we age, it is expected that we're going to have less eggs and that we're going to have more abnormal eggs. And that is because we are born with our eggs. So those eggs need to be preserved until the moment that we fall pregnant, that they are able to merge with another sperm, which puts them at risk of becoming abnormal, that at a certain point they're missing a chromosome or they have an additional one. And by the age of 35, we're expected to have about left 50% of normal quality eggs. So this is very different for men because they aren't born with all of their sperm cells. They produce new ones all the time. That doesn't mean that we can't do anything about our egg quality. We can, of course, as I said, preserve egg quality that they last longer. 
and we have influence over the maturation process because we aren't born with all mature eggs. Those eggs are matured every cycle and it takes about three cycles from maturation until release of the egg. But it still makes sense that the older we are, the more our egg quality will suffer because they are exposed to more free radicals and toxicity. And the older we are, the more trouble our cells have to rejuvenate and regenerate. And that includes the cells around of the egg. So all of these factors do contribute to our ability to preserve good quality eggs. So the second one is hormone testing. So the AMH and the FSH that I shortly touched on in the intro, AMH stands for anti-malarian hormone, but you might also see it on your test results as malarian inhibiting hormone. And this is a hormone produced by the eggs that are in your ovaries. So as these eggs are being stimulated to mature, they produce AMH. So the higher AMH, the more eggs are expected to be there because there are more eggs producing AMH and the lower AMH is the less amount of eggs are expected to be in the ovaries. So as you see, AMH doesn't necessarily say anything about the quality of the eggs. Although if there are lots of poor quality eggs, you could expect them to be producing less AMH, but primarily it says something about the egg reserve. It used to be that AMH levels under 0.5 nanograms per milliliter was considered to be low reserve, uh, but I feel like the number 0.8 is used more these days. But okay, let's say between 0.5 and 1.5 is considered low to normal range and above 1.5 is considered a good range. However, there's also such a thing as too high AMH. So that is above three is usually considered to be high. And that is often an indication of PCOS because you can imagine with PCOS, there is this problem of ovulating and lots of follicles are being matured. So then it makes sense that there is high AMH, right? I did a video a long time ago about AMH and the fact that it actually does fluctuate throughout a cycle and in general as well, and that you can influence AMH numbers. So I'm not going to go into it more into this video, but I'll make sure to link it in that video because although it was a couple of years ago that I published this video, I rewatched it and I thought, yeah, this information is still spot on. And then the second hormone levels that are often used when it comes to egg quality or reserve is FSH and FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. And that is the hormone that is produced to stimulate your ovaries and the eggs to mature. So you can imagine if there are fewer eggs left that are producing AMH that the FSH levels go up because the body's like, hey, you guys, do something. Okay, maybe we need to ramp up the FSH for you to start doing something. So that is how that works. But if your reserve is lower rank, you will often find that AMH numbers start to drop before FSH goes up. So if you have normal FSH, but you have lower AMH, then that's an indication that your reserve is dropping. If you have lower AMH and you have high FSH, then you are nearing menopause. If you have high AMH and you have normal FSH, that could be an indication of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Still following along? Now I once had this patient who said, um, but I have high FSH and high AMH. So what the heck is going on? Do I have lots of really poor quality eggs? But that is not the case. If you have that experience of high AMH and high FSH, it is possible that you are indeed struggling with some polycystic ovarian syndrome or even a very minor form. The very, very good news is that studies have been done on high AMH and high FSH uh, situations and both assisted reproduction outcomes and natural outcomes were actually really good for these groups. Again though, as you can see, AMH and FSH, they don't say anything about quality. They say something about amount. They say something about your ovarian reserve. And as you age, you're going to know you're running out of eggs. So these outcomes, if they match your age, pff, they don't really give you much information on your chance of, of being able to conceive naturally and to carry full term your baby. Because again, you just need one egg. And if there are AMH levels, that means you are still maturing eggs. So it's much more important for you to know if you are indeed ovulating and you can learn that by tracking your cycle. I've got a free course for you that you can sign up to. I'll link it in the description down below. But it's also really important for you to know if you're ovulating timely because this is the thing that you can see from whether you have low quality eggs and I should say a low quality egg because it is that one egg released in that particular cycle 
and that's if the egg has been released early. So if it has been released before day 12, so day 10, day 11, day 9, you will know that the egg did not have long enough in the first half of your cycle to mature, so it will be of lower quality. And if it then merges with sperm, the chances of it turning into a healthy embryo are very, very slim, although miracles do happen. The third piece of information that is used for egg quality is follicle count. And I have to say that this is the one thing that probably gives you the most accurate information. And that is when they scan your ovaries as you are maturing the eggs. If on that scan you have a good amount of um, follicles that are between four and nine millimeters, that tells you that there are a couple of eggs that are maturing normally. Again, on that ultrasound, we cannot see anything about the quality of those eggs. We can just see how many are not maturing abnormally, basically. And then the fourth piece of information that is often used is if couples are suffering from repeat miscarriages. Now, sometimes the embryo can be tested and then something can be said about the chromosomes if they were normal or abnormal. But generally speaking, if there are repeat miscarriages, it is accepted to kind of assume that something is up with the quality, but it could be both eggs and sperm again. So if your doctor says that you have bad eggs, ask questions. Ask them what information they have used to draw that conclusion. Don't get disheartened by it. <laughs> chances are that your doctor is going to push you more towards assisted reproduction services because they want you to have the best chance possible. And if you wait too long, the chances will be not as good with these methods. But it says absolutely nothing about your chance of being able to conceive naturally because you just need one egg and the one sperm. So shall we focus on the quality of that one egg and that one sperm cell? And of course, make sure that you make good use of your fertile window that you actually catch that egg. And the closer that we get to menopause or perimenopause, the lower our hormones will be, cervical mucus will be a little bit less, so it will be more important to uh, make love closer to ovulation. So it's even more important that you're able to spot when ovulation is nearing. Now go watch the video on your screen right now, which is all about improving egg quality naturally. And in the meantime, See you in the next video. Bye.